the next gadget war is about to happen on your face. And if you buy the wrong kind of AI glasses, you will pay real money for a fancy camera that still lives off your phone and still does not feel natural outside. That is the secret nobody wants to say out loud. The glasses that win will not be the ones with the flashiest demo. They will be the ones that fit your life on a random Tuesday. And Google is finally back with a plan that looks less like a science project and more like something normal people might actually wear. Here is what makes this different. Android XR is not just a pair of glasses. It is a whole lane system. Some models are built to stay light and screen free so you can talk to Gemini and get help without pulling your phone out. Others add a small in-lens display so directions and translations show up where your eyes already are. Then there is the bigger swing, the true AR-style hardware that feels closer to a portable workspace than a fashion accessory. But there is a catch. Most of this will still be powered by your phone in the early days. That means your experience rises or collapses based on software maturity and the apps you actually use. If you are a commuter, a traveler, or someone who wants hands-free help without looking like a cyborg, this could fit. If you want full sci-fi overlays all day, you need to slow down and choose carefully. Because the biggest mistake is not picking the wrong brand, it is picking the wrong lane. AI Assistant, Tiny HUD, or Real AR Workspace, those are three different lives and they will not cost the same, feel the same, or last the same in battery. So before we talk hype, we are going to talk buying rules, comfort hours, outdoor readability, privacy in public, and the one criteria that decides whether these glasses become your daily habit or your most expensive drawer souvenir. If you want the safest bet in this whole category, it is the pair that does not try to paint the world with graphics. It is the pair that stays light, stays subtle, and still makes your day easier. That sounds boring until you realize boring is exactly what wins when a product lives on your face. The shocking truth is most people do not need floating menus. They need friction removed, fast answers, quick calls, simple capture, and the confidence that wearing them outside does not feel like a costume. This lane is about practical AI and clean audio. You ask a question and you get help without stopping. You hear directions without staring down at a slab in your hand. You grab a photo or a short clip without turning your whole moment into a production. On a crowded sidewalk, that means your eyes stay up. On a long airport walk, that means your hands stay free. And on a late night ride share pickup, that means you are not glowing like a beacon with your phone screen out. Here is the honest limitation. Without a display in your lens, you are not getting true visual guidance in your view. You are still listening and reacting. This fits people who want a daily assistant they can actually wear. Travelers, commuters, creators who want quick point of view moments, anyone who hates pulling their phone out every five minutes. But once a tiny display enters the picture, everything changes. Navigation stops being a voice in your ear and becomes a glance that feels natural. Translation stops being a phone interaction and becomes a quiet superpower. That is the next lane. And it comes with a risk that most buyers will not see until it is too late. This is the moment smart glasses stop feeling like headphones with a camera and start feeling like a quiet advantage. Not flashy. Not a billboard in your face. Just a small strip of information that appears when you need it. And that tiny strip is where most people will either fall in love instantly or regret the purchase by day three. Because a HUD sounds simple, but your eyes will punish anything that looks even slightly wrong. In real life, this version shines in the ugly moments. When you are rushing through a station and your phone is buried in a bag. When you are crossing busy streets and you do not want to stare down. When you are in a foreign city and you need translation without turning the conversation into a phone session. A good HUD feels like a glance. A bad HUD feels like a smudge you cannot wipe off. Here is the limitation. A small display lives or dies on visibility and alignment. If it fades outdoors or sits in the wrong spot for your eyes, the magic collapses. This fits buyers who want quick guidance and subtle assist. People who walk a lot, people who travel, people who want useful context without carrying a headset lifestyle. And now, the real twist. The next step is not a better HUD. It is a completely different kind of setup that aims for a much wider view and a much bigger workload. It can feel like a portable workspace in the air but it comes with a compromise most people will not expect until they see how it is powered. Project Aura is not smart glasses. It is a different class of AR. 
Project Aura is the kind of product that exposes a hard truth. Real augmented reality is not free. If you want a wide view that feels like it can hold real work, something has to carry the load. And Aura makes that choice on purpose. It does not pretend everything can live inside thin frames. It splits the burden so the experience can get bigger without turning the glasses into a brick. This is built for moments where a tiny overlay is not enough. Think a floating screen you can actually use while you move around your home office. Think a reference panel beside your laptop while your hands stay on the keyboard. Think a bigger visual space for creators who want previews without pulling out a tablet. The reason it can even try this is the tethered compute pack. That outside piece handles a lot of heat and power so the glasses can stay focused on the view. Here is the limitation. You are choosing an accessory lifestyle, a cable, a pocket module, one more thing to carry and one more thing to charge. This fits power users, early adopters, developers, people who want a serious AR experience and are willing to dress for it. But the most important question is not how futuristic it looks. It is whether the platform behind it can deliver real apps fast because even the best optics feel pointless if the software is thin. That is why the next part matters more than the hardware, the developer tools, the app pipeline, and the quiet platform moves that decide who actually wins this category. The real killer of smart glasses is not a bad lens. It is the empty feeling after the first week. When you realize the hardware is fine, but the software is thin, that is the graveyard this category has fallen into before and it is why this time feels different. Google is not betting everything on one flashy demo. It is trying to flood the system with usable apps fast. Here is what that means in human terms. Google is building paths for developers to push familiar phone-style experiences onto glasses without rebuilding their entire world from scratch. It is also building UI tools that are made for transparent displays, so text and controls do not look like stickers pasted onto reality. Add location-aware AR foundations and you get something buyers actually feel. Direction cues that do not drift, context that stays pinned where it should. Then there is the wild part, software tricks that can make flat media feel deeper and more spatial without asking creators to remake everything. The limitation is still real. Early experiences will vary wildly between apps, and power demands can punish you if the system leans too hard on your phone. This fits viewers who care about day one usefulness people who want a wide app library, and developers who want a platform that does not fight them. Now that you know what actually decides winners, we can stop guessing and start choosing. Because the smartest purchase is not the most advanced looking pair. It is the pair that matches your daily lane and your tolerance for compromises. In the next section, I'm going to turn this into a clean decision map so you can pick the right tide fast and avoid the most expensive mistake in this whole space. If you shop for face tech like it is a phone, you will get burned. Phones can be forgiven, glasses cannot. They touch your skin, they live in your peripheral vision, they change how strangers look at you. So the buying move is not chasing the most futuristic promise, it is matching the right type to the way you actually move through a day. If you want something you can wear without thinking, choose the kind that behaves like audio-first eyewear with AI support. It works when you are carrying groceries, walking to the subway, or juggling a coffee and a suitcase. If you want constant guidance while your phone stays in your pocket, you want a discreet heads-up display. That is for city walking, travel days, and anyone who hates stopping to check directions. If you want real floating panels and a bigger visual workspace, you are in the powered setup territory. That is for home office sessions, creators, and early adopters who do not mind carrying extra hardware. Now the trade-offs. Brighter overlays usually cost comfort and battery. More features usually mean more heat and more setup friction. More camera capability raises privacy tension in public, so you need clear controls you will actually use. And whatever you buy, treat the return window like insurance, because your face will tell you the truth in one week. In the final verdict, I am going to give you one safe recommendation for most people, plus one conditional pick if your use case is specific. And I am going to tell you the one thing that will change this entire market over the next year so you do not buy too early and end up watching the real upgrade ship right after you commit. The smart move for buyers right now. Here is the hard truth. The first pair of AI glasses you buy will either become part of your routine or become a guilt object you pretend you still use. And the difference is not brand hype. It is whether the product disappears on your face while it quietly saves you time. That is why the smartest move is not chasing the most advanced demo. 
It is buying the type that you will actually wear on a random day, in bad lighting, with real noise and real people around you. For most buyers, the clean recommendation is the simplest lane. The screen-free style that focuses on voice, audio, and practical AI help. It has the highest chance of feeling normal and the lowest chance of turning into a maintenance hobby. If your life is walking heavy and travel heavy, and you want guidance and translation in your view, then the conditional alternative is a tiny HUD-style display. Just promise yourself one thing, do not trust the dream. Trust visibility outdoors, comfort over hours, and controls that make you feel confident in public. If you are a power user chasing real floating panels and a bigger workspace, then accept the accessory lifestyle up front because that experience only works when you commit to the full setup. Now the future watch. The next 6-12 to 12 months will not be about who has the prettiest glasses. It will be about who builds the fastest useful ecosystem. If Android XR turns into a real pipeline for everyday apps, this category stops being a niche and starts becoming a normal purchase. If it does not, we are right back in the land of cool demos and abandoned drawers. And if you want the next video that naturally follows this, I will break down the best alternatives and the smartest waiting strategy so you do not spend too early and miss the real wave.